the six and seven figure show episode 22 ready let's hit it broadcasting from the valley of the sun outside phoenix arizona this is the six to seven figure show tired of working so hard and having no time take your six figure practice and turn it to a thriving seven figure enterprise and now your host author speaker mentor and strategist Frank Bria. Hi everyone, it's uh, the Six to Seven Figure Show. Welcome. Uh, I'm your host, Frank Bria. Today I am joined by the lovely Christy Cass. Uh, she is a certified health coach, an international business coach, and mentor, guiding health coaches and wellness practitioners to create impactful and profitable businesses using both online and offline strategies. Uh, she draws on over 15 years of experience in business, marketing, and sales, and Christy helps her clients leave their nine to five and become their own boss and do the work they love. Welcome, Christy. It's glad to have you here. Oh my gosh, that sounds like so much fun what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it is, I'm sure. So um, just real quick, uh, wellness, health coaching, give me, give me some examples for those maybe in the audience who want to say, well, is, is what I do, does that fit into there? What are some of the examples of some of the people you work with? Ah, okay. That's a, that's a great question, actually, Frank. So health coaches uh, typically are certified. There's a lot of health coaches out there who, are, who may not be, who have a really strong um, background in a personal health journey where they've learned a lot in a very specific niche. Um, wellness practitioners that I've worked with are everything from nurses to chiropractors, um, orthopedic therapist, all sorts of different wellness practitioners that are really driven and have a passion for getting not just to the root of what's going on, but really preventing um, those chronic health issues that so many of us you know, struggle with that eat that standard Western diet. So I tend to work with, with folks that support um, you know, the, the average person out there who's wanting to have a better nutrition and lifestyle experience so that they can be healthier. Great. And, and you basically work with folks who are in that space to help them build their businesses. Is that correct? Exactly. I actually started out as a holistic health coach, a certified health coach. Um, and it was a really organic uh, process. This was not my plan to do what I'm doing today. It just really kind of organically came to be. I built um, a very successful business utilizing both online and offline strategies for my health coaching business and actually launched uh, something called Health Coach Protocols, which was something I created with doctors that I worked yeah. with. And these were done for you or are <laughs> done for you um, protocols and resources that health coaches can use in their business. Launched that um, almost a couple years ago now. Uh, yeah, actually a little over two years ago. And what sort of organically happened was folks were asking me to other health coaches once they would purchase it, they were really happy and they started asking me to mentor them. And that just sort of evolved to where I was doing less and less of one thing and more of the other. Right. Absolutely. That's, I swear, uh, I know very few entrepreneurs who planned where they landed. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> almost always just sort of a pave the cow path kind of a thing. So for those people who are listening, uh, you know, offline strategies don't get talked about very often these days, um, but they're still incredibly effective. What are some of the Absolutely. offline strategies that you use? Uh, just to give people an example. Oh, of course. So one of the things that I teach that is, um, I think, really niche specific for me because of my personal experience is helping health coaches and wellness practitioners who want to work with other wellness practitioners, who want to work with doctors, who want to work with chiropractors, and how do they forge those relationships where they're, I call it a win-win-win because the patient slash client is also ultimately the big winner here. Sure. Um, but how to forge those relationships, those referral relationships, how to do so in a way where they're staying in their scope of practice um, and also um, you know, growing their business in their local community. When you pair that offline strategy with an online strategy, you can create great balance and sustainability in health coaching business. 
That's that's really interesting because I think a lot of local businesses sort of get wooed by the internet thing and forget mm-hmm. completely mm-hmm. that they're in a very rich local economy um, full of potential business and sort of ignore that low hanging fruit and try to go off and well, I'm on the internet so I can go find a client and you know, in Europe or something like that. When in fact in their own city, they probably have a great deal of business. They could, they could get right there. Well, and when, when you're doing kind of both sides to the business here, you don't have to go meet with those clients in person. Mm -hmm. I, when I first started my health coaching business, I was based in Dallas. I worked with a clinic that had clients all over the world that would come to them. And um, so my clients, so I just very organically was you know, working with them on Zoom or on Skype. And I stopped meeting with clients in person in my local community simply from an efficiency perspective. It didn't yeah. make sense sure. for me to go drive somewhere, meet, you know, and I would lose an hour of my day just doing that piece of it. So it wasn't an efficient use of my time. And you can run an offline and offline business right here with yeah. what we're doing right now. That's, very that's, effectively. that's really nice to leverage the hybrid of that. And I, I suspect in the health and wellness space, it's easy to get caught in that hourly trap of where you uh, feel like your physical presence or your time is needed. Yeah. So, so easy. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> it's, uh, and it, it becomes this really vicious cycle you know, where they're seeking that one-on-one trading time for dollars. Um, Whereas you could take a high ticket premium program that you're launching online. You can do local workshops and you can create a local group program where you're leveraging your time there as well. And you could still meet online. You could still do Zoom calls with your group so that people don't have to, again, it's efficient for your clients as well. They don't have to. And if you want to go do a you know, a, a field trip <laughs> to a grocery store tour or something like that. You can certainly incorporate that in, but it's, uh, it's really, I, I think a smart way to do business efficiently. And again, I'm all about that sustainability. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a really good point. And, uh, I'm sure that there's a number of people who just like a light went on when you said a uh, field trip to a grocery store. <laughs> that's a, uh, that's a brilliant addition into any, uh, <laughs> So, so tell us a little bit, Christy, about the kinds of program that you run with, uh, with uh, health coaches and wellness coaches. What, what does that look like when you work with them directly? So we have a phenomenal team that works with our clients, including me. I'm very active and very involved in the coaching of our clients. Um, but we actually have a six-month program and it is very high touch. It is an implementation focused program. And so we're very upfront about this. This is not a program where you're just gonna watch some videos and kind of do it when it feels good. We are keeping you on track. We are expecting things to be done in a certain amount of time so that they can get into flow. They can begin you know, working with clients and, and receiving that, you know, getting that revenue coming in. Um, but it's very much very implementation focused and we teach them really from soup to nuts. So we've got some folks who come in who already have that maybe they've been in business for four or five years. So they've got some of those business foundations taken care of. So we'll, you know, fast track them a little bit further up. Um, but we have some folks that, you know, maybe they graduated from school in the last six months. So they need, you know, to really dial in their niche. They need to get some clarity on their branding and how they're going to show up and how they're going to be visible. So we support them with that if necessary. Um, but the, the crux of it is supporting them in designing a signature program. You know, there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of health coaches out there. Right. And to stand out in a very crowded marketplace is key. So getting clear on their niche, their messaging, and having a signature program that doesn't look like everybody else's detox, because that's what so many coaches do. They go and buy a done for you detox and they're launching detox programs that look like everybody else. So they become white noise. Yeah. And so for me, it's about really, you know, supporting these coaches and how to get visible, stand out authentically not look like anybody else, but truly be themselves because they're going to magnetize their ideal client. If they're, if they're speaking their language, they're going to magnetize them. Yeah. And then, of course, we get into the marketing of that program and we talk about the offline and the online strategies to do so. Yeah. Uh, and 
as, as you take people through that process, Christy, what, what are, what's one unique challenge to the wellness and health industry that for coaching that you think uh, you have to really bring people through that maybe they wouldn't otherwise do on their own or people get stuck on their own? Is there like a, a unique element or a, or a specific thing that people typically get stuck on in your industry as they're building that up? Well, I think that's a great question. And I think it's not actually very unique. Uh, I think we see this across the board in the coaching okay. industry, but speaking to a very narrow niche mm. is where the yeah. brilliance is. And that's where that, you know, expansive growth can happen. And health coaches have a really hard time doing that. They want to help everybody. They're these big, beautiful, heart-centered entrepreneurs. Yeah. I, they can, and, and oftentimes they can help everybody. And just reframing over and over and over again. Frank, I can't tell you how often we have to reframe that you can still work with someone who may be outside of your niche right. if you can truly help them. Yeah. But let's dial it in because that's where the messaging really hits the bullseye. So that, that is something that I have found for some clients we're working on, you know, constantly reframing over and over again. And, and it's almost like you have like a little kid or, or I don't know, you know, somebody, something that you're training, you're like, nope, go this, nope, straight line, keep going because <laughs> they keep wanting to get off track. Right. Yeah, that's true. And, and, and with, I think it was a health coach. The only time I've had, you know, when I, when I started to have a discussion with an entrepreneur about uh, target market and, you know, what's your avatar look like. And so I said, you know, who do you work with? What kinds of people you work with? And the response was, I work with anyone who breathes. <laughs> and I think no. she was yes, trying great, to say, but no. yeah, I think she was trying to say that she does something with with breathing and breath and 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 that was very important and i'm like that's clever but you can't sell the 7.5 billion people that's not that's not gonna work <laughs> yeah i i i uh i think you're right that's that's not just in the wellness and uh and 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 health space but i think across the board there's this fear right that if we niche down too far that we're leaving money on the table that there's people that we yeah. want to sell to that we can't sell to and and um, that fear, I think actually one of, uh, one of my clients uh, posted just recently, it's a fear of missing out, literally yeah. applied to your audience and it, it just doesn't work. Um, it just doesn't, the math doesn't work out that way. So uh, it, it's great that well, you address that. Yeah, it is. I think it's counterintuitive for them. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, I always describe it as it's a mathematical formula because to me, everything's a mathematical formula. But um, you know, a lot of people think, well, if I reduce the number of people that I'm talking to, then I'll reduce my income. But there's a, there are a number of other things in that equation, right? There's the number of people you're talking to times the, the conversion rate of those people times the money that you could charge per person. And the other two variables go up when you niche down. Like, you know, if, if you're going to try to sell the seven and a half billion people, you're not going to convert very many of them because you're too generic and you can't possibly have a high, a very high ticket if you have too big of an audience. So, you know, those other two variables go up faster than that one goes down. And I just think people don't think about the whole equation when they're, when they think about niching down, but maybe that's too technical, <laughs> but uh, no, no, I think I it's think that, that's actually Absolutely on point. And, and I think the other thing that we do that's a little different is we also incorporate the science. You know, we mm. have the protocols that I developed with doctors. Those are actually part of the program as well as the teaching of the science behind them wow. and doctor interviews. So we, we have that element. And for me, I think that that helps to, to create some confidence where oftentimes, you know, I, it's amazing to me how often health coaches for some reason feel like they have to know as much as a doctor, which is not their role. They don't, they're not, they didn't go to medical school. No one's right. expecting them to have all the answers. Right. And we're not supposed to have all the answers. That's not our scope, right. but supporting them and having some basic science foundations is something else that we do that I, that I do think is unique. So it's not simply yeah. A business training program. It's really much more comprehensive than that. Well, and, and again, that's the brilliance of what you can do when you focus on a niche, right? You 
have identified who you're working with and therefore you can add in very specific elements to the program which are unique to that niche which would not be interesting to probably anybody else i mean if you were working with a general business coach they wouldn't care about that necessarily and so um yeah i mean again the 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 strength and the power of of focusing in on that niche um now i know christy that you work with a lot of coaches at the same time so what are some of the elements that you've built into your program that allow you to uh, to grow your practice? In other words, to grow the, the business and work with uh, multiple people at the same time? Oh, yeah. Well, focusing on their success is key number one, right? That's the most important thing. So having some processes in place to do that. A couple of things that we do is we don't have um, big Q&A calls. We actually started that way. But we made some adjustments as we as we all do, right? As with our programs, um, instead of having a group Q and A call where somebody who's working on their niche is listening to somebody talking about Facebook ads, we actually have created what we call pods in mm-hmm. our program. So they're content specific Q and As. So we have three different um, Q and As each week, and based on what your question is, what you're working on, where you are in the program, that's the pod you want to go to so that you can get really laser focused support and help. And I've got, you know, expert coaches who are helping me to lead those pods. I pop in, I, I lead the, the pod number three is what we call it, but we've got our accountability success coach in pod number one. And I have a professional copywriter who, you know, when we're working on messaging and copywriting, we have a pod that is specific to that as well. Nice. So that's something that, it, that we do that I think is really special to support our clients. And that was actually based on client feedback early on. Yeah, that that's they, great. That someone new would come in and they might get overwhelmed mm-hmm. talking about funnels and you know, right. all of that stuff when they're just trying to figure out you know, their niche or their signature program. Well, and splitting up by topic like that, that's a best practice for longer programs like yours to, mm-hmm. to have different areas like that. So that's... Uh, it's it's uh, terrific that you're using that that uh, technique. It does it does we you know we see it work really well across lots of different programs. So uh, congratulations on implementing that. That's a that's a great thing. Um, <laughs> the uh, the the as you are uh, continuing to grow, are there things that you're mm-hmm. looking uh, into the future that you're saying okay at, you know where we see the industry grow as you start to add more people in, are there things you're, you're looking at and saying, okay, we've got plans now to implement additional things um, as, uh, as the program grows, anything you're looking forward to in the future? Well, we're actually kind of in that process right now. So that's a very (laughs) timely question. Um, I'm actually currently we're, we're, we're refining some of our modules to essentially update them because as you know, the industry is changing. What was working two years ago is a little different now. So we're, we're working on that as well. We've, um, something that else that we've implemented is our clients do have a one-on-one call with their accountability coach every month to keep them in flow. Yeah. But as far as looking to the future, um, for me, it's about making sure that we're providing very high value content, that we're... Um, testing some new things in the marketplace from a marketing perspective to see what is um, most successful so that we can then share that with our clients and help them to be more successful. But that's, for me, it's always about finding the right mentors to learn from, to experience, and, um, and to grow as you know, an entrepreneur myself, and then to, to to share that wealth with, with my clients so that they can grow and be successful as well. Yeah. I I think that's, um, and, and I mean, that's a really strong area that I don't know that everyone really appreciates the power of. There's a lot of entrepreneurs who will put a program out and, um, they'll start to look at the systems behind the scenes, but they don't seem to always go back and review the content like you're Mm -hmm. suggesting, which is a, a really missed opportunity, I think, for a lot of people Sorry, when they right. don't go back and look at that. Um, you know, it, it's easy for content to get stale, especially in the marketing space. You know, things change, um, and you've got a, a an even more vibrant space where wellness and health is also a changing uh, marketplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, things that 
uh, sort of are in favor, move out of favor, new things are discovered, new ideas are tested and tried. So um, that's great that you're uh, continuing to look at content. That's something I wish more entrepreneurs would do because I think a lot of them do let their stuff go stale. They figure, I'm done. I recorded all the videos. We're finished. And while yeah, they I'm, might- I'm literally- we're, we're getting ready to do, we're redoing them. I say yeah, redoing them. Yeah, yeah. We're going through a rebranding process. But while we go through that process, I'm refining mm -hmm. the content yeah. um, and adding some things too that we've seen, you know, as our clients go through that we're now coaching around, but I don't necessarily have a specific training. Yeah. So we're adding some of those things in, which you know, the, the program has been live now for a year and a half. So we've got a lot of experience. We have a lot of client success, but you also start to see, and we've added some things throughout the last year and a half, but you start to see, you know, this, this might work better here. And let yeah. me, let me make that adjustment so right. that the new folks coming in will be even more successful. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people know that's going to be the case when they launch the program, but you, what you're telling us is that even after it's mature, you still have to do that process because you're always going to get more feedback, which is great. Uh, that's, I, I always tell people when they're designing a program, you know, it, whatever you write down, it's going to be wrong. <laughs> you're you're going to have to fix it. <laughs> you're going to have to change it. It just, don't worry about it. Just get something out there and start getting feedback because that's the best, you know, anyone who sits down with a marketing coach mm -hmm. or, you know, program designer, they're going to have some ideas about what to do, but nobody's right except for the client who actually pays uh, the fee to get in. They're the only, they're the only feedback that really matters. So um, well, one last question for well, you. I we will... actually have an end of, oops, I'm no, sorry. Go ahead. go ahead, what you were going to say. That's fine. I was going to say, we also, um, we actually have an end of program call with each of our clients oh, nice. to get feedback. Yeah, and to get their thoughts, and of course, it's an opportunity for testimonials. But that's where we've gotten some really pivotal feedback. Um, that honestly, I wish they would have mentioned earlier. <laughs> it's a six-month program um, where we've seen opportunities to to make things even even better. That's great. Yeah, that uh, that uh, that feedback loop so critical. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of entrepreneurs are scared to ask for feedback because they're and afraid. I understand that. Yeah. Well, it's because it's your baby. You've just, you know, put this thing out there. It's your baby. No one, you don't want anyone to say, oh, well, it could have been better with this, that, or the other thing. I, I do think a lot of entrepreneurs uh, shy away from getting that critical feedback. It's true. So. Yeah. No, um, nobody wants to be told they have an ugly baby, right? No, that's, that's <laughs> definitely true. Uh, one last question for you before, because uh, I know time's running out. Um, what's the one thing that you feel like you wish you had known going into building this program that if someone had told you it would have made the path a little bit easier for you? Oh my gosh, that is such a great question. What is the one thing? Yeah, we always write it down to one. <laughs> I know there's probably like 10. <laughs> I was gonna say, I could probably give you 10. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm pausing here. I'm really, really thinking. Um, That's fine. I think one of the greatest challenges that we have had that I am so thrilled to say, I feel like we have finally taken the long journey to finally having a strong sales process in place. And not just from the marketing perspective, um, this is once we get on the phone call, having those right people um, as part of my team to support us. And I, that part of the journey, I was absolutely not prepared for um, because very quickly, I did not have the bandwidth to take all of the calls. Yeah. Um, within probably eight weeks, I had to, I was looking. And so at that point, you're in panic mode, right? You're like, I need a warm body to take calls. And the, the management of the sales team um, and finding really good people yeah. was, not, was not easy. So that, that was probably one of the bigger struggles that I had. Um, and I'm so thrilled. I, I have an amazing team right now. I've got two, two phenomenal ladies that work with me um, who are really passionate about what they do and, and, and very professional and good at what they do. But that, that took me over a year 
to yeah. find them. And I would have liked to have had a much shorter process. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, but that's, but I, I, that is a really good point. And uh, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, especially when they're just starting off in the sales piece, you know, they, they think, okay, well, I just need to have enough time in my calendar to take calls. And then when calls come in and it starts to fill up the calendar, um, they think, okay, well, can I manage these all? But it's more than just call management. It's all of the other things around the sales process. It's, it's pre-call setup. It's post-call follow-up. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, when they start to get overwhelmed by calls and they get focused on sort of closing that one call, um, they miss the full sales pipeline management. This is an area where yeah. I, I think we do a disservice to a lot of entrepreneurs because we get them so focused on the one call close. Mm -hmm. Like you just need to be able to close it in one call. That's just not true in a lot of cases. Like there, there needs to be follow-up. People do take time to think. Um, there are going to be people who say no the first time who will say yes later, but there needs to be a process in place. And if you don't think through what a sales pipeline management process will look like, um, you, you actually are leaving money on the table in that particular case. So uh, it, it's great you've, you've made it through that curve. I, I think a lot of entrepreneurs are stuck in that process right now. Well, and it was, it was the, like going in circles for a long time and, and hiring consultants and that didn't work out. I mean, it was really, there were a lot of, I like to say, very expensive lessons that were sure. learned. Yeah. But the lessons were learned. Yeah, um, that's great. But, but to your point, if you're a solopreneur and you're taking all those calls, it does limit, it, it starts to impact your creativity, which impacts, you know, to your point, the pipeline, because you're not, the, the creativity is slow to, yep. you know, create that compelling content, to nurture your audience. All of those things start to get out of, out of whack, essentially, out of sync. Right. Right. And there's just this cycle that you can get into. Yeah. So how early in the stage would you recommend an entrepreneur actually go and hire an external salesperson to sell their program for them? Well, I think it's important to master that process yourself because you learn a lot about your potential clients and your, your current clients when you're the one initially bringing them in. Yeah. But I think as soon as, as you, as your calendar is booked to, you know, let's say you have a limit of 10 or 12 calls a week that you can manage and you can block, time block, time block, time block. Because <laughs> otherwise you're, you're switching back and forth. Your yeah. brain is switching back and forth, which right. impedes your productivity significantly. Sure. Um, but as soon as you get to that point where your marketing is doing such a good job that it's bringing in decent, you know, quality calls, you need to be in that process at that point of, yeah. of already seeking, talking, and thinking about how are you going to train these people effectively as well and making sure your calls are recorded so they can hear those good calls and what's working and what's not working. Yeah. They were just there. Honestly, there, and I had a sales background, but it was person to person sales, right? It's the old fashioned conventional yeah. sales background right. advertising sales years ago. And it's very different <laughs> from phone high ticket sales. So yep. there was a learning curve for me as well. Yeah. I, yeah. I think a lot of people can, you know, resonate with what the way you're describing that for sure. Um, Chrissy, we've got to run. Unfortunately, we're, we're out of time and I know you're super busy, so we don't want to take up more of your uh, valuable time. But as people have been listening and they're thinking, man, I really want to reach out to Christy and figure out more what she's doing um, or connect with her. What are, what's a, a good way for people to do that? Absolutely. Connect with me on Facebook. My business page is Christy Cass. If you're a health coach or a wellness practitioner, we do have a private group exclusively for health coaches and wellness practitioners. There's not cool. going to be a bunch of other people coming in and marketing to you in there as well, but there's a lot of support. It's called Health Coach Success Mastermind. We also have an okay. Instagram, which is Christy Cass. And if you'd like to get a taste of what we do and how we work, um, I do have something to share with you guys. It's called the Standout Health Coach Niche Kit. And this is a training, it's a video training, a workbook, and a done-for-you anti-inflammation um, foundational program. It's just a simple ebook that you can use with your clients as well. And I know Frank has the link for that that we'll yep, be sharing with that's you. Yep, that's right here below. Yeah, terrific. Thank you. Um, 
And an ebook that people can use, essentially a white label content. That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. They can brand it, customize it. It's all yours. That's amazing. Well, that's a really generous gift. Thank you, Christy. Really appreciate that. And I appreciate your time as well. And thanks for sort of educating us about this space and uh, the work you're doing, the great work you're doing with uh, health coaches. I know, um, you know, you and I have talked previously about some of the uh, amazing results that your folks are getting. So uh, it's always a pleasure to hear uh, you break it down a little bit for not just me, but for uh, the listeners there. So I uh, really appreciate the time that you've taken with us today. Oh, Frank, thank you so much for having me here. This has been a joy and um, just a great experience. And I, any opportunity I get to connect with you is a golden opportunity. So thanks for having me here. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And thank you very much, uh, you, listeners, for uh, tuning into the Six to Seven Figure Show today. And uh, for this episode, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to connect with Christy, uh, you've got the link here. Um, below in whatever uh, format that you're there. Or you can come through uh, to the show notes page if you're listening to this audio independently. And uh, we really appreciate you taking the time and investing. Uh, we know that your time is valuable and to take your precious time to uh, listen to us, we're thrilled and honored for that as well. And so thank you very much. Uh, and we will catch you on the next episode. 